Hi, this is Mark again, and this is a sixth video in our series about European Interparties Pattern Review, otherwise known as Opposition Before the European Patent Office. Um, what we've been doing is looking at the preparation for filing an opposition. We've thought about the grounds of opposition, which fall under Article 100 EPC, and these are sufficiency of disclosure, added matter, novelty, and now we're going to look at inventive step. Now, obviously, you'll be out there preparing the opposition, trying to find relevant documents, documents which haven't been cited in the normal patent prosecution. And hopefully you found quite a few. If you're very lucky, you'll have found something which is novelty destroying. But often the case is that maybe you haven't, or if you have, then maybe there's some fallback positions in the application of uh, some dependent claims, which you may not have covered off. So it's well worth putting in a portfolio of documents um, on the basis that if you put a document in initially, it's definitely in the proceedings, whereas if you try and put a document in later in the proceedings, after you've actually filed the opposition, then it's a question as whether the document is prima facie relevant. And that could be hard to establish, especially since you're not quite sure, perhaps, as to what amendments the proprietor may make to try and avoid the prior art that you have cited. So, in my view, it is good to cite several documents in terms of objection in terms of inventive step. And I've certainly been in oppositions where I'm faced with 20, 30 documents and it takes an awful lot of time and effort to go through and learn those documents. And it may well be that only one of those documents is particularly relevant. Well, only the opponent really necessarily knows which of those documents is the key one. And it could be that it's document 16, which seems a bit incongruous, which is the one that you're really going to major on. And a lot of the other documents are just there as, as a bit, bit of background, uh, background reading, really. Now, I don't want to exaggerate that, and I'm sure the opposition division themselves at the EPO don't want to see too many documents. But nevertheless, it's something to bear in mind. Once you've got that stock of documents to draw upon, to combine, then you're in a good position later on in proceedings to raise further arguments, because you can always raise further arguments, but not necessarily add further documents. Finally, when you actually raise your inventive step objections in filing an opposition, you'll probably want to put many combinations of documents down. Now, I've seen essentially gratuitous combinations of documents which are not really supported, and this doesn't necessarily help support the veracity of a case, but nevertheless it does um, dilute the energy which the proprietor can put into defending the case simply because there are so many potential attacks. So, whilst it's well worth being focused, having quite a few documents and have quite a few inventive step attacks are probably well worthwhile. Because at the end of the day, if the patent doesn't fall on uh, added matter, which is a question on the facts, on sufficiency, which doesn't happen very often, on novelty, where you're lucky if you do find a document which really anticipates, then most of your argument is going to be on inventive step. So you need to have plenty of ammunition in the locker to do that. Okay, thank you very much for listening to this video.